Hi, I'm Ben McSheffrey, and I'm the Technical Training Manager for Simmons Industries. I'm back here in Studio 41, and today's topic is our newly redesigned widespread faucet. We've made some design changes that make all of our widespread faucets easier and faster to install. Let's swing over to the workbench and take a look, and then I'll show you that new installation process. Widespread faucets are typically found in high-end bathrooms, and they'll fit into sink and deck layouts from 8 inches all the way up to 16 inches. They look fantastic, and right up until this redesign, they could be a little tricky to install, especially in tight spaces like vanities with drawers. Sometimes you need to be above and below the sink at the same time, or you need arms that are six feet long. Well, our engineering team feels your pain, and while they can't do anything about the length of your arms, they did create a widespread faucet design that installs easier and will likely reduce your back pain. So that's a good thing, right? Let's go over some of the tools and supplies you'll need. The faucet includes a small bag of parts with two Allen wrenches that are needed. So you'll only need an adjustable wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. So there's actually two methods for installing the spouts on the new Simmons widespread faucets. The standard way and an alternate method for when there's not a whole lot of room between the faucet and the backsplash or the wall. We'll run through the complete standard installation first, then we'll look at that alternate method for mounting the spout. The faucet is constructed of four main components. The spout, the spout shank, the cold valve body, and the hot valve body. The first step is mounting the spout shank. That's the threaded brass port that receives the spout. You'll notice that the spout shank has a groove on the underside of the flange for an O-ring. Place the O-ring in the groove and then fit the spout shank into the center hole of the sink or deck. Make sure the O-ring stays in the groove when you mount the spout shank. From underneath, place the large metal washer over the threaded shank and then spin on the mounting nut with the jack screws. Position the flat side of the washer towards the sink basin. Snug the nut and washer as tight as possible by hand, and then tighten the jack screws evenly with the Phillips head screwdriver. Next, determine if your valve bodies have standard cartridges, or if there are extensions installed on top of the cartridges. You'll need to know this info so you can get the stems to the correct height for the handles. Here's an example of our standard cartridge, and here's an example of a cartridge with extensions installed. There are two engraved lines on the threaded shank of the valve body, and each corresponds to the mounting position based on which cartridge you have. It helps to rotate the valve body to locate the engraved lines. If you have a valve body with standard cartridges, set the chrome mounting flange to the lower line, which measures roughly an inch and three quarters to the top of the cartridge stem. If you have a valve body with extension cartridges, set the chrome mounting flange to the upper line, which measures roughly two and one eighth inches to the top of the cartridge stem. Once you've determined the correct mounting height for your faucet, it's time to mount them. Unthread the mounting nut and remove the metal washer from each valve body. Similar to the spout shank, the valve body mounting flanges have a groove on the underside that accepts an O-ring. Insert the O-ring in the groove and make sure it stays in place when mounting the valve bodies. Feed the braided lines and valve bodies down through the holes. Hot on the left, cold on the right. From underneath, install the metal washer and then the mounting nut with the jack screws. When they're seated, double check that the chrome mounting rings haven't moved during installation. Snug up the mounting nut by hand and position the valve body so that the longer supply line with the compression nut faces the outside. Then just secure the valve body by tightening the jack screws with the Phillips head screwdriver. Once both valve bodies are mounted and secured, it's time to install the spout. Pass the black tubing of the spout down through the hole in the spout shank on the sink. Move the spout to the correct position and use the larger Allen wrench from the bag of parts to tighten the set screw on the spout base. Snug up the set screw firmly so the spout does not move. The small bag of parts also includes a plastic aerator key and a gray push fit T fitting. You'll just need the T at this point. From underneath, insert the brass ends of the braided hoses into the ends of the spout T. It's best to gently twist them as you insert so you don't damage the O-ring inside. Push them all the way in until they stop. Before you insert the black tubing into the smaller branch of the T, make sure the supply hoses aren't kinked. It helps to loop the braided hoses so there are no sharp ends. Then just push the T onto the black tubing until it stops. Now just thread the chrome compression nuts on each supply line onto the supply stops. Just snug them up with the adjustable wrench, but don't over tighten. Back up on top now, let's install the handles. First, thread the flange on and screw it down tight. A dry hand is usually the best tool for this. Just get a good grip and snug it up. Do not use any tools on this part or you'll damage the finish. Once that's in place, you can insert the handle. Use the Allen wrench that was included to tighten the handle set screw to secure it to the cartridge stem. 
The stems have multiple splines so you can align the handle properly, but if it needs to be moved slightly, just loosen up the Phillips head jack screws underneath, position the handle where it needs to be, then tighten up the jack screws again. We definitely recommend flushing the faucet before use, so we'll remove the aerator in case there's any debris in the water supply that could clog the screen. That small bag of parts includes a small key type tool that's used to remove the aerator. Just insert the tool into the aerator until it locks into place and unscrew. Remember, lefty loosey. It's a good idea to put a towel over the drain to prevent the aerator from dropping into the abyss. Ask me how I know. Now, let's turn the water on at the supply stops and flush out the valve. Great, now reinstall the aerator and take a good look around to check for leaks. That's it, you're in business. Earlier, I mentioned that there were two different ways of mounting the spout. So now I'll show you the best way to mount it when there's not much room behind the faucet. If you remember in the last installation, we mounted and secured the spout shank first, then we mounted the spout to it. Well, if you have a backsplash or a wall that sits close to the faucet, you likely won't have enough room to get the Allen wrench in there to tighten the set screw. No problem. Those crafty engineers plan for situations just like that. In this case, we'll mount the spout to the spout shank in advance and then install the whole assembly as one piece. So just insert the black tubing through the spout shank, slide the spout down onto the shank, and then snug up that set screw with the larger Allen wrench. Then insert the spout assembly through the mounting hole, put on the metal washer, and then the mounting nut with screws. Now here's another cool design that was included to make things go smoother. The spout shank is intentionally narrow and the metal washer is cut on one side. So if you're really tight for space against the backsplash, you can move the spout forward while still covering the mounting hole. That cut washer enables you to get the spout closer to the sink basin without interfering. When you have it exactly where you want it, snug up the mounting nut with your fingers. You'll need to position the spout before final tightening. So check the orientation of the spout, then tighten it down with the Phillips head screwdriver. For water connections, just follow the same steps as the previous installation. That small bag of parts contains one last item. You're probably wondering what this funny looking thing is for. No, it's not a golf tee, although it probably would work pretty nicely as one. This little guy is a plug for the spout branch on that water connection tee. We've included it in case you need to perform a pressure test on the valve bodies and connected piping. Before you insert the black spout tubing, Press this part fully into the T to block off that port and pressurize the system as needed. When you're done, push in the dark gray collar and hold it as you pull the plug out. Then insert the black spout tubing and test the faucet. And that's how you install the newly redesigned widespread faucet from Simmons. Definitely a huge improvement over other faucet designs on the market today to get you up and running quicker. If you have any questions related to the installation of this or any Simmons product, do not hesitate to call our technical support team at 1-800-SIMMONS. On behalf of the entire team at Simmons, thanks and have a great day.